Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Well, tonight I'm going to teach on developing a merciful attitude. Is there anybody here tonight that could maybe use a little more? <laughs> Now, we all know we need mercy, right? There's nobody here that thinks they don't need mercy. We all need mercy. And uh, interestingly enough, a lot of people will say, well, yeah, we know God is merciful, but yet they don't receive that mercy really for themselves. It's amazing how good we can preach to other people, those of us who know the word, and how little of it sometimes we receive for ourselves. You know, if, when you have a problem, if you take the same advice that you would give, <laughs> it's not that we don't know the answers, it's just that we don't always apply them to ourselves. So, starting out, let me say that you cannot give away something you don't have. So... In telling you to be merciful to others, I have to take a few minutes to just say you need to learn how to receive mercy for yourself on a regular basis. And the great thing about mercy is it's unfair, it's undeserved, and there's more of it than we can ever use up. God's mercy is new every day. So you don't just get a certain amount of mercy in your life or a certain amount of mercy from God every week or each day, but However much mercy you need, as long as you're willing to receive it, God will keep giving it to you. And I'm quite sure that there's a good number of people right here tonight that you've got this kind of thing between you and God. You, you feel like you failed, and God's reaching out to you right now through my mouth, offering you mercy, and it's time for you to take it, just take it, I said, just take it. I mean, just get a big dose of it and get on with what God has for you to do in life. It's time to get unstuck. We reach places in our life and we get stuck in those places. And can I just say to you that God is not nearly as hard to get along with as you might think he is. Amen. He's actually pretty easy going. Has lots of guidelines he'd like us to follow, but only because they'd be good for us, not because he's going to get all against us if we don't do the things that God would like us to do. And so after having learned how to receive mercy and keeping in mind how much mercy we do get every day on an ongoing basis, it should get easier then to give other people mercy. I think one of the reasons why we don't extend as much mercy as we should to other people is because we do sometimes forget how much mercy God has to give us on a regular basis. You know, the Apostle Paul said, he was just so amazed that he was an apostle because he had per previously persecuted the church. And he made a great statement. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. So I thought I'd just tell you a few things about some of the things that I've done in the last couple of weeks. Not that I'm proud of them, but I haven't had the most holy two weeks in my life. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little, you know, holier than other times, but I just, I don't know, kind of had some wimpy days, and so... Actually, not last week, but the week before, I told a lie. <laughs> oh, well, make me feel bad, why don't you? <laughs> Dave's saying, I didn't know about this. <laughs> Now, if I'm going to tell it, Dave, I'm going to tell the whole world. <laughs> Now, I remember saying, I remember saying sometime in the last year, well, one thing I never do is lie. You know, that's the worst thing in the world you can do. You're all still trying to get over the fact that your Bible teacher lied, right? Well, <laughs> you do too. I'm just the one that tells it, so. Um, I didn't even realize I lied. 
And I woke up about three o'clock in the morning and God told me that I lied. He's very good about telling you things. And it's really for our own good because he wants us to repent, get rid of those things. And so you, you never need to be afraid of chastisement. Anytime that God shows you something that you did wrong, you ought to rejoice because uh, it's frightening to think that I could have done something like that and never realized it. And really what it was, and some of you may do this thing, but it never occurred to you that it was a lie. So here we go. I was filling out some paperwork at a place where I was getting a medical test. And you know, they ask, people there are so stinking nosy. <laughs> I mean, you can go to get a facial and they want to know so many things about you that are just like none of their business. I want you to put cream on my face. You don't need to know everything else that goes in my body. Thank you. The kind of medicine I take is none of your business. I just want to get a facial. And I realize, you know, they want to make sure that they're not going to do anything that's going to hurt you. But do any of you feel that way sometimes? Like everybody just, get, I mean, the questions that you get asked to do some of the simplest things, it's like, so anyway, I was filling out this paperwork. They were asking me questions. And we came to something, and I just thought, you know, that ain't none of your business. Well, I didn't want to say that's none of your business. So instead, I lied. <laughs> but I didn't really realize I lied. <laughs> Now, can, you guys could have a little sympathy on me tonight. <laughs> you know, if you've never been to one of my meetings or heard me before, I'm really sorry, but this is just the way that I am. And so I just tell the truth. That's just what you got to do. Now, I, I really thought about whether or not I was going to tell you this because I thought when I stand up and say I lied, they're going to go. But, you know, it, if there is such a thing as a white lie, this was one. But. Maybe not, I think a lie is just a lie. Anyway, I just, the answer was yes, and I just said no and went right on about my business. <laughs> Didn't even think anything about it. Now, how many of you have done that? You're just like, oh, everybody. <laughs> everybody except, of course, the few ministers on the front row. We never, <laughs> you know, and even if we did, if you're on the front row, you never admit it. It's, you know. And so, man, I repented. Man, I repented all day. I just... I just didn't like the fact that I did that. I was quite ashamed of it, but I was not condemned. And I'm still kind of shaking my head thinking, I cannot believe that I lied. But I'm glad I saw it because it's kind of like sometimes God deals with us like he's peeling layers off of an onion. You know, something that you might do like that 10 years ago, you might have not even thought anything about it, or I might have not even seen that. But you see, now the closer you get to God, see, the closer you get to God, and the more you pray that you want to be like Jesus. And my prayer this year, one scripture that I'm praying every day, is my determined purpose is to know you and the power of your resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while I'm in the body. And so if we're going to know him like that and be intimately and personally involved with Jesus, then we're going to begin to notice things about ourselves. Hopefully this year we didn't see last year. And next year we'll notice things that we didn't see this year. He changes us into his image from glory to glory, but God doesn't just change us without the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Learn the difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction lets you know what you did and is ready to lift you out of it. Condemnation pounds you down, 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 down and gives you an oppressive feeling that now you're no good and God is mad at you. Another thing I did was I made a rather important decision without even consulting God at all. I just had a plan. And not only that, I got some other people involved in my plan because I'm a good motivator. So now we all had a plan and we're all going in this direction talking about our plan. And I thought one day, I don't, don't, I don't feel real peaceful. No, what, what's wrong? Oh. Yeah, 
did that thing I tell everybody else not to do, right? I planned and then prayed that you'd make my plan work. Come on. I didn't pray and then plan. I planned and then prayed that God would bless my plan. Come on. We're having true confession tonight. So I had to repent about that. And then this week, those other two things were last week. I behaved better over the weekend, but now this week, I just behaved very impatiently in a situation. I had so many things going on and so many things coming at me at once, and I just kind of went over the edge. Do you ever just do that? You just think, I know I'm about to act stupid, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's one level when you don't, you don't know you're going to do it. You can't control yourself, but I kind of just decided. <laughs> well, and I did it in front of one of my kids, and so that wasn't really good. That's, that makes it even worse. So anyway, and then... While I was being impatient, I stayed busy complaining. So that's my true confession of my lack of holiness in the last two weeks. And I say to you tonight that here I am by the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. I expect to have a much better week next week. By the time you see me on TV Monday morning, I promise I will have straightened up. How many of you love me anyway, and you think it's good to tell the truth? Right. Now, see, I'm not going to have too much trouble having mercy on anybody else for the next couple of weeks. And you know, one of the reasons why is because I seriously looked at every one of those things. And I thought, my, God is so good to me to still anoint me and to use me and, you know, I sense God's presence in here tonight. He didn't run away because I wasn't perfect the last two weeks. God is extending mercy to you tonight, and all you need to do is reach out and receive it. Don't be so focused on what you do wrong. Be more focused on what Jesus has done right. Amen? Amen. Now, remember, in each one of those things, I said I sincerely repented. It's not a matter of just making light of those things. But we need to be very merciful. Now, I'm going to read you a story. And interestingly enough, I just love how God is. It happens to be a great story about mercy and forgiveness that involves a prisoner. Charles Manuel murdered a stranger named John E. Barb and is now serving a life sentence in the Louisiana State Penitentiary. The victim's brother, Bill E. Barb, found himself in an emotional prison of his own filled with bitterness, anger, and unforgiveness. In prison, Charles read the Bible and came across a copy of Joyce Meyer's book, Battlefield of the Mind. He began asking God for forgiveness. He realized finally that God had forgiven him, and so then he started asking God to help the E. Barb family forgive him for killing John. Two to three years, he prayed this way. While he was there in prison, his own daughter was killed in a drive-by shooting, and he felt the pain the e -Barb family went through and the revenge and the unforgiveness that they had felt. God began to speak to his heart, saying, you cannot ask them to forgive you if you won't forgive the person who took your daughter's life. Well, he forgave that person that took his daughter's life, while unbeknownst to him, at the same time, God was dealing with Bill, with Bill Ebarb to forgive Charles. Now, I want to make sure you don't miss all these details. This guy is in prison praying for the family of this man that he had killed to forgive him. He's praying like this two to three years. He needed to forgive somebody who had killed his own daughter. While he's praying, God is dealing with this man over here to forgive him. Let me tell you something. When we pray, God goes to work. I said, when we pray, God goes to work. 
He prayed two to three years. Just because you don't see an immediate reaction when you pray, that doesn't mean that God is not working. One of the biggest things that we need to say every day is God is working in my behalf. No matter what I see, God is working. As long as you're believing, God is working. Amen? Bill finally asked to meet with Charles in prison. And exactly 18 years from the day his brother John was killed, Bill went to the prison, looked at Charles, and said, I forgive you. Both of them received healing that day. For Charles, forgiveness from the family, and for Bill, the release of his bitterness, anger, and resentment. Currently, because of the incredible changes in Charles Manuel, he and Bill participate in a victim's dialogue program helping other victims and inmates find forgiveness. Now, that's what I call a turnaround. <laughs> you guys aren't as excited as you ought to be. See, some of you are thinking, well, that's a little too much for me. Let me tell you something. By the grace of God, we don't have to hate anybody. We do not have to be full of bitterness and hatred and resentment. We don't have to hate ourselves for things we've done. We don't have to hate other people for the things they've done to us because really, when we do allow that, we are destroying our own soul. Now listen to this. I'm so excited. Most recently, Charles was issued a full pardon and is now awaiting a signature from the governor that will set him free. Come on, give God a praise. That's just one story, a great story, of forgiveness and what forgiveness and mercy can do in a person's life. Now, let's look at Psalm 86. The Bible is full of scriptures about the mercy of God. This is only a very small example, but I wanted to read you just a few of these scriptures. Be merciful and gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. <laughs> I love that. I wonder how many times a day he was saying, be merciful to me, O God. Maybe we should upgrade our cry for mercy. Be merciful to me, O God. Maybe, you know, once a day, 10 times a day, 20 times a day. Be merciful to me, O God. Verse 5. For you, O oh Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Okay, now, I want you to pay attention to this ready to forgive. Ready to forgive. You see, I've come to the place where I think that we need to set our minds before we ever go out of the house about how we're going to behave that day. Don't just wait and let things catch you by surprise. Every morning, examine your heart and say, am I mad at anybody? And if you are, deal with it before you go out. Because if you've got it in you, it's going to come out of you. The Bible says to put on mercy in Colossians 3. Put on sympathy and pity. That means it's something that you have to plan to do on purpose. Not one of you walked in your closet this morning and said, I wish my clothes were on me and had them jump off the hangers and onto your body. We can't be passive and hope to feel like being merciful. We have to decide, 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 plan, make a plan. <laughs> if anybody hurts me today, I'm going to forgive them before they're finished hurting me. Anybody who hurts me, I'm going to give them mercy. Why? Because God is merciful to me. For you, O Lord, are good and ready. Don't you like that? Ready to forgive. Our trespasses, sending them away, letting them go completely and forgiver forever. And you are abundant in mercy and loving kindness to all those who call upon you. Verse 13. For great is your mercy and loving kindness toward me. Verse 15. But you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy and loving kindness and truth. 
There are probably so many scriptures on mercy that it would be very difficult to count them all. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, we're invited into a life style, a style of living that would actually make life a lot easier on us if we would follow it. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. How many of you think that loving people is a lot easier on you than hating them? Yeah, about 20% of you. I'll ask again. How many of you think that loving people is easier on you than hating people? Well, see, some of you knew when you put your hand up, you're going to have to get around to forgiving somebody. Oh, yeah, there are people here tonight that came in angry. You maybe even came with a person you're angry at. Who knows, you know? A lot of mad people go to church. Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. Now, that come to me is really an invitation to not just come, but to come and learn. I will ease, relieve, and refresh your souls. God wants to make your life easier tonight. The message that I'm preaching you tonight about receiving mercy and giving mercy to others is all designed to make your life easier. It's not to try to make you do something that's hard. Forgiving people is not hard. The thing that's hard is hating people. Being angry all day is hard. Being full of bitterness all day is hard. Uh, thinking about everything that everybody's done to you all day, that's hard. Forgiveness is easy, but you can't do it without humility. And the only way we can ever have humility is to realize how awful we are <laughs> apart from God and the great thing that he has done for us in stooping so low as to come down to this earth, take human flesh upon himself, pay for all of our sins, be beaten, bled, died in our place, took our punishment as a totally innocent sacrificial lamb. took his blood back to heaven, put it on the mercy seat. Come on. To stay there forever, and the blood speaks mercy, mercy to all who come. Amen. Well, it is very important to be merciful, but also you want to keep in mind that you can't give mercy to others if you haven't received mercy from God for yourself. Sometimes we just need to not be so hard on ourselves, and then we won't be so hard on other people. This community likes boys, so they want their boys to go to school first. The girls, they don't have any, any value when it comes to education for them. So if they can get some money for her and not have the burden of having to care for her, it helps the family. The flags that you see on the homes over my shoulder represent a long-standing tradition that is very difficult on girls. As soon as a very young girl reaches puberty and she's of childbearing years, you'll see these flags above their houses representing the fact that a young girl is available to a man, essentially on the market, up for sale. And at that point, her life changes dramatically. So what they do is they take him out of school and they'll actually go through different activities, teaching them how to cook, how to be a, a wife in the, in the home. But part of it is also how to please a man. And that's through, you know, normal things in the house, but also sexually. So they teach them different things about sexuality and so on. 
So we are doing anything that we can to help people understand the value of girls. That's the key. And helping these girls by taking them into a program <laughs> called Imagine Hope. If they would live with us for six months and we would have devotions, lead them to the Lord, really mentor them in how to be a godly woman, and then at the same time teach them how to do some skills, basic things like jewelry making or whatever it is that they can have some kind of an income that they can bring to their families. This is a good hat. Were you afraid when you thought that you were going to have to be married? Some of my friends, they are already married now, but they are used to suffer in that marriage. So if myself, I was afraid to be married while I'm still young, but because of this program, my mom, she didn't take me to the marriage, but she bring me here so that I can proceed with my education, so that I can help her in future, change her situation. I, I'm so grateful. I wish I could bring everyone here and let them see the impact of what's happening. Um, and I'm grateful for it because we should give and we should give to those that we don't benefit us. And I think that's what Hand of Hope does and, and we're grateful for that. We are helping young women like this all over the world. Help us to guide, restore, and love young girls. Your designated gift today, if you choose, can go to Project Girl, or you can give toward water, you can give toward feeding, and do something that you know will make a difference.